Hey residents of Meeple Town, Essen Spiel is right around the corner, and so we are going to be doing and our... And we're not going. No, we're not. We're not going. But, but we're excited about it. We can still get excited about the games that are coming out at said convention, and that's what we're going to do today. Talk about our top 10 games that we're pumped about releasing, hopefully releasing. That's that's the goal that we have for this <laughs> video. So, anyway, ready to just jump what do right you mean into it? it? Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't control whether they're going to come out or not. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right, so I'll kick this list off, right? Because I'm always the first player. Number... No. Number 10. True, but you always don't go first on these lists because you like to have the number one. You like to have <laughs> the last say. I like to have the spotlight. All right, so my number 10 is a game that I'm actually really, really excited about. Uh, maybe more than some of these other ones, but I kickstarted this one, which is why it's so far down on my list. And that is Reavers of Midgard. And this is coming from the the it's a follow-up game to champions of midgard which is you love that game i love it a lot and this is another worker placement with lots of twist and i'm just pumped about it i think this is going to be really fun and i'm looking forward to it I, I might even be more excited about this game than other games on the list but again i kickstarted it so i know that i'm getting it in the not too distant future so. i don't uh, what or, do you know what your list is no you're, <laughs> you're I know. Like, I like you'll it. see i like it better than these games <laughs> but i'm gonna put it down low but i've kickstarted it i'm confused dude. i don't know it's just a list man <laughs> <laughs> it's just a list man it's just a list <laughs> yeah that's that's my number 10 i'm i'm pumped about it I, i'm midgard. interested in that game i like champions in midgard didn't love it but i liked it so i'm i will be excited when you get it and spend your monies on it yeah, how yeah. about that Already spent. There you go. There you go. Uh, even better, right? Yeah. My number 10 is a game that I believe was like, I think whenever we did a podcast, it, I think, I couldn't be wrong though, we had a list of top five games that we're, wanting, that we're excited about coming out this year. So that was a while ago when we did that. I think this was on that list. If it's not, then you can correct me. But that is Barrage. And the reason that I'm interested <laughs> in Barrage primarily is a Simone Luciani game, which I really enjoy his games. And it's this dystopian 30, 1930s theme where you're building dams, <laughs> uh, which is cool. I think that's really, really cool. I like the wheel selection that you're going to have in this game. That looks really, really interesting to me. Um, now, the negative, the thing that actually... It might be higher on the list, but I have heard a lot of complaints about the components and seen some pictures about people who kickstarted this game. And the wheel was the Rondell type thing is all wonky and like I showed Dean. Mm, yeah, it looks bad. It looked bad. So it's actually put a little bit of the pause button, though I hear, hear the game itself is really good. I'm still excited about it. It might be a little bit higher for what and for that, but I'm still uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yep. I don't know if I am. So you don't care about this. You don't know if you care I, about I've that. looked a little bit into it. We'll we'll see. I mean, it, I guess time will tell on on all of these games. As does it always. All right. So my number nine is higher on John's list. So I'm actually gonna hold off. Yeah, um, we actually had to pause the video for just a moment because there are some kids that we see out the window riding their bicycles, <laughs> which Dean just had to inform me that they heckled him as he pulled into the driveway. That's right. And so he shook his fist at them. Yeah. I <laughs> that has a lot to do with our... All those statements are actually, unfortunately, correct. <laughs> yes. So your number nine is higher on my list. It is. Well, my number nine is higher on your list. All so right. So let's go ahead and move to number eight. All right, so <clears throat> my number eight, I know that is not on your list, but one that I'm a little pumped about. It is obviously, a little pumped about. obviously it's on my list, but this is <laughs> War of the Worlds, the new, the new Age, and this is a game that I had considered backing. This was kickstarted a while back, and I had really considered going that route. It's asymmetri asymmetrical uh, two-player only game. Root has ruined you for asymmetric it is, hasn't it because not, you like it so much. Well, this one's more in line with um, a few acres of snow. It's like a deck. Ooh, okay. There's the, the deck building aspect and it looks Ooh, really cool. cool. I just couldn't do it because of the uh, the finances. I can't buy all the games out there. So <laughs> so I held off on this one, but I'm, I'm excited about this one. It's a, In the U.S. it's going to be published by Gray Fox Games. And I, part of me wants to see a little bit more about it. I've not actually played A Few Acres of Snow. That was another reason why I held off, because I thought, let me play that game, see if I so like it first. So you said there's is... deck building in that? Correct. Have you read the book, War of the Worlds? I, uh, no. Uh, yes, I did, actually, a long time ago. Have but... you seen the movie? No. Mm -mm. Yeah, both. That's how I am, too. I've not seen the movie. Nope. Interesting. 
Like for some reason, that, like no. Well, I mean, I think that the book is really good and interesting. <laughs> yeah. But because the movie, I think I watched part of it and it was just mediocre. Like it, I know I say that say almost like the IP is not as interesting to me because of that. But it's a fantastic book. Yeah. So I sh I should I be listened, super excited. I listened to the original uh, radio show that. Really? No. You did. No. How old do you think I am? Seventy two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my number, what are we on, eight, I guess, because we skipped over nine, right? Yeah. I'm actually interested in that now that you mentioned some of those things. Yeah, I think so that's kind of cool. Oh, the components are, they're fantastic, too. They look fantastic, anyway. You, you you opened up with not being that, you said something, opening that one up, that it sounded like you weren't as excited about it, and then now you kind of got me hyped up about it. So. Um, no, I'm real excited about it, but the, the reason why this didn't jump up higher is because I've not played a few acres of snow to gotcha. know if that's like gotcha. the style yeah, that's of game what I you like. Want. Yeah. All right, so my number eight is a game that um, I have enjoyed the last uh, several releases of, um, that's Shim Phillips, of course, um, but... Oh my gosh, I couldn't remember the name of Architects of the West Kingdom. Architects of the West Kingdom, of course, like Raiders. And so I'm very interested in Paladins of the West Kingdom. Um, also because I hear that it's like it's definitely a little bit heavier than the others, which I think would be kind of cool, and I would like that. I've heard some really good things about Paladins of the West Kingdom, so it's just straight up, I'm interested in this game. Um, yeah, like the how box, about you? The box weighs more, it's heavier. Yeah, yeah, I do squats with it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's yeah. Um, Are you interested I, in this one? We'll see. We'll see. I, you I liked Architects. I, I really like Architects. I thought it was a lot of but fun. But for some reason, you're not as interested in Paladins. We'll see. I, I don't know. I It's just, weirdly enough, it hasn't been much on my radar, and I don't yeah. know why. But Raiders is one of my top 50 games. Architects is probably a top 100 game for me. So I think, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. There you go. I think maybe it's the follow-up to those... Like the the Raiders, you know, the games that followed up to that seem to not get as much hype, and maybe that's what it is for me. I don't know. You said time will tell multiple times, so hashtag time will tell Dean Dunning. All right, my number six. As the kids say. <laughs> is that what we're on? My number six is. No, we're not. Oh, I'm we're sorry. On number seven. I'm sorry. My my number seven is I believe is that higher on your list? Did I get that wrong? Number seven for Dean is my number nine. Oh, that's what it is. So it's we can now talk about list. this together. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So my number seven is Merchant's Cove. John's number nine. I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah. Mostly when I first saw this, I'm more excited about this than Paladin. So <laughs> whoops. Let's just reverse what, I, what I just did. <laughs> Um, so merchants, when I, I started seeing like these Facebook advertisements a long time ago, months ago about this, and I just saw the graphics, saw the, the components, and I thought, wow, this game looks beautiful. And then reading more about it, knowing that it's asymmetrical gameplay and how much I love Root, and uh, not that this game plays anything like Root at all, but that asymmetrical gameplay. Yeah, but the idea of like this merchants and like going around and doing like that's with that being asymmetric, right? Not a war game, yes. like per se. Like that's uh -huh. really that really intrigues me. I'm yeah. like, oh, this sounds uh -huh. cool. Yep. Yeah. So that for those reasons, I'm I'm really wanting to check this one out. Can't wait to to see this. Yep. For the same reasons that he said in that again, like I said, that asymmetric merchant kind of idea. Like that's seems very Euroy, but asymmetric, and and that just it sounds really really interesting. And I've heard um, some. Po I know po R Rado has said some really positive things about this game. So the only pause button I have is it's not a. a uh, price friendly. <laughs> I guess it depends on what it is, but I think it was. Oh, I haven't like, seen the price. I think eighty bucks was like the cheapest Kickstarter version yeah, of this game. That. So like, yeah. So I'm kind of. And they, if I remember right, they've got expansions right out of the gate too. I think that, or... they do. I think that yeah. actually the Kickstarter started came with an expansion, which does help with the price for sure. Yeah. Um, depending on what the expansion adds, but anyways, no, that's one that's um definitely on both of our lists that we're pretty excited about. Yep. Want to check that out? That's number seven. Number for seven me, for you. Nine for him. All right. So my we're just talking over each other Where a little bit. <laughs> My number seven is a capstone game, Ragusa. I am really interested in this game. This In this game, you're kind of city building. You have out in the country, kind of outside the city, and then you have inside the city, and this is made up of a board with a ton of hexes, and you're putting your buildings onto a place where obviously it's going to touch multiple hexes and it gives you production kind of like placing a worker but you get production for the rest of the game based on where you put it in the various different spots hmm. but the more that you put around the hexes you get more production but it costs you more and you kind of slowly move in and start building inside the city and when you're inside the city you're uh trading things for victory points and doing different things like that so it looks 
it's really intrigued me. I've watched some playthroughs of this and it just seems like um, I like engine building and there's definitely a big engine building mechanic to this also with that city building. So it looks really interesting to me. I'm excited to try Ragusa. Yeah, I want to, I, 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 kind of. I mean, it's it's not on my radar. I've watched a few things on it, but it's not It's not even it's not even close on your to radar. my top 10, I think. But when you talk about it, it sounds cool. And that weight, it's 2.72. So it's that's not what it sticks with. That's usually kind of my sweet spot somewhere between there and three. So I think it, I, I'm, I'm pretty intrigued by this one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll check it out. All right, my number, where are we at now? Number six? Number six. All right, number six for me is higher on John's list, so I'm just going to pass it back over to you. All right, so my number six, I better get that ready, is a game that's been out for quite a while, and now they are reprinting it, and the reprint's not out yet. Hopefully it'll be out at Essen, and that is Preta Porte. Hmm. And that is, uh, hey, that's your boy Ignacy Chevichek, who you quite enjoy. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, <laughs> what a cool theme, actually. Like that, that, That's the first thing that actually drew me into it, was this fashion design theme. And to know that it's like an, it's an economic game, which I generally like economic games, when you me me mesh those th two things together, and then um, there's people that I really respect that really enjoy this game. I don't know. I've seen a little bit of some playthroughs on this. I haven't sat down and watched a whole playthrough. But just with those things, and I like Ignacy Chevichek, so like... He obviously, I mean, uh, Imperial Settlers is really high on both of our lists. So, mm. with the theme and all that meshed together, like, I'm this is one I'm pretty interested in, and uh, that's why it's number six on my list. Yep, and not in my top 10, but I really I want to check this one out. Yeah, too. I think I think that you'll like this one, mm -hmm. even though I, I don't know, I don't know what it, I think because you like thematic euros, and yeah, I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's. I don't know, on here it's 3.63, so that might be a little bit heavier than you generally like. But sometimes I think not. that's the thing that's kind of scared me away. However, uh, there's another one. The one I just mentioned as my number six that's higher on your list is is weighted around that same weight. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. Um, but I definitely want to play it. I just It just didn't make my list. Sweet. What did make my list at my number <laughs> five, and this is quite a bit lighter. I know what this one is. Mississippi Queen. And the reason, the biggest reason why this is so high on my list is because I, I feel this need to try all of the Spill the Jars winners at some point. And I think the production value on this one looks cool. You now I've heard some negatives about the gameplay. I told him some negatives. Yeah. See, on our podcast, we did our top five. And as soon as he mentioned this, I kind of pooed it. He did. He was not... He wasn't sure about putting it on this list. Like he was saying, I'm teetering. And I said, well, you might as well teeter off that list. Yep. Because, I did not. Because did. It's, he didn't. He didn't go ahead and take it I off for this not. video. Because I think this one is going to be a little more approachable. Um, I, I, I'm, I don't mind light games. I like a lot of light games. So that's not the issue. It's just, I guess, some of the some of the gameplay and how it plays out. I think it sounds cool with, with um, pick up and deliver, I'm assuming, is how that plays out. You're picking up passion, passengers and delivering them. Um Anyway, I, it looks cool. I just want to check it out. So Yeah, I was actually interested. The reason I said that to Dean was I was interested in this game, but then I just heard several people say it was kind of meh. So maybe they're wrong, though. Like, I would, they're I'm, wrong. I would play it, for sure. I'm open I mean, to it, playing it. It won Spill the Jars, and it's being reprinted, so... There's a reason why? I think. All yeah. right, well, we'll see. Unless they sell no copies. Time will tell. I guess so. As, All right. As Dean Dunning says. All right, that's my number five. Mississippi Queen. Yeah, so my number five is a game that uh, is in the same world as another game that I thoroughly enjoy, and that is Oh My Good. So this is an Alexander Pfister game. I just fairly recently saw that this was coming out, and it's called Expedition to Newdale. And because I quite enjoy Oh My Goods, this looks like Oh My Goods, but with a board and uh, the way that you're able to do production a little bit different, maybe making it a little um, more flexible in your production. And so anytime I think Oh My Goods potentially cranked up a notch, I'm ready to roll. I'm pretty excited about Expedition to New Dale. And honestly, anytime Alexander Fister's name is on a game, I'm interested in it as well, as you will see even later on. So I'm ready for this one. Spoiler. Spoiler. Right. I think I think you would, because you liked Oh My Goods. I did. I, I'm a little disappointed. So Oh My Goods is Oh My Goods with exclamation marks. So it's actually Oh My Goods, but you're just saying Oh My Goods. I think you need to hype it up a little bit more, right? Oh it's my, the name of the game. Oh my goodness. That's what I think about your comment. <laughs> That's what I feel right now. There All is right. an exclamation point. I'm moving on to my number four, which is not on your list because you haven't played the base game of this, but I think you would like it. But that is Clank Legacy. Actress. Incorrect. It has an exclamation point there. <laughs> yes. Clank. Clank <laughs> Legacy. You're like, what is he oh, doing? Oh man, you're right. Oh, I was trying to look Pops. super serious. <laughs> 
false. <laughs> Clank legacy acquisition disorder. Uh, disorder. Disorder. <laughs> Acqu- I've got you all disoriented. <laughs> Acquisitions Woo! Incorporated. That's quite the mouthful for a name of a game, but. Uh, Clank is one of my <laughs> favorite games, made my top 50 games, and I really enjoy legacy games. Now, here's the issue. I really want to try this, but these legacy games involve a strong commitment. You enjoy to them, but you don't finish them. them. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I understand. So, so, anyway, I... I really, really want to try and finish this one, but I just need to find a, a person or persons that would play it. Now, my wife has not played this, and I think... Is that no, a person me? No, not you. It's not. My, wa- <laughs> my wife has not played Clank, Can and I, I think she myself? might like it. And if she does, she might play through that with me, because we've been doing the Pandemic Legacy game for about 17 years now, I think. It's taken us a while. It but has. I really want to check out Clank. Clank! Legacy. I've never played Clank! And I want to because I only have heard positive things about it, even by a lot of people. I don't usually care about if Dean likes it or not, but there's other people that have said that it's that's, really good. That's so fair. that is not true. I do care. <laughs> uh, and he really likes it. So I really would like to try that one. All right. So my number four, that's what we are on, is we are on number four, is uh, Terramara. So this game uh, has the same artist as Stone Age, which I'm a big fan of, the, of Stone Age, and yeah. that initially drew me in because it looked very Stone Agey, but it looks like a grown up. But it, it actually doesn't play like Stone Age, so let me not even say that. What's intrigued me about this game is the way that you place workers and receive workers, primarily, is there's these big, long, horizontal tiles, and you're going to be placing workers on them. And you can place workers like on the first, first tile, or you can go down and place them for more powerful actions lower. But the thing is, is at the end of the round, that first tile, I believe it flips over, but you get workers back only on the first tile. And then as you go to subsequent rounds, you get the workers down. So you can do a more powerful action or more powerful actions, but you might not get your workers back, or you wouldn't that round, or it may take two rounds or take three rounds. So. I think that's really cool when it comes to decision making. Like, do I want to get those actions now? Do I want to hold off and and get do some lesser actions maybe, but get more workers? And so that's really interesting. And then on top of that, I love this idea that you start off as a child in this game. And at some point in the game, I know that you like this. That sounds really cool. You like this because you're a theme guy. At some point in the game, and all the all those cards give you special power, you flip over and you become an adult, which then changes your power, your ability, your bonus, whatever it is on the card. And so, like, I think that's really cool too. Do you, like, do you choose when you become an yes. adult? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. So you choose, like, okay, now it's time to now, grow up. Now I'm an adult, just like real life. You just it choose. Is. Now I'm an adult. That's it. Dean chose at 32 <laughs> to become an adult. Maybe. Maybe um, not yet. I mean, we do uh, board game videos, so maybe we're still a little childish. Maybe. Maybe. How old are you now? All right, my number four. You're not 40 30. yet. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're 38. I'm 38. You're getting there. All right, so yeah, I'm, I really Terramara, Terramara yes. is something I am I'm excited about too. It didn't make my list mainly because I had my list before John, but I really want to. I think uh, you're pretty excited. I about want to that. check that one out. I yeah. think it'll be good. All right, my number three is a game that's not on your list, but I think um, it looks pretty cool. I think it's Paris New Eden, and this is a uh, a rebuilding after an apocalypse, right? So it's... Uh, I like apocalypse. Well... Yeah, so post-apocalyptic game where you're building up Paris. Fictional. And the, so I'll tell you what drew me to this game. One, it's a Madigo game. Two, it, the designer is uh, Ludovic Mablanc, Mablanc. And uh, I really enjoy... One of the one of the designers. Uh, the other one, this is their first game. But I really enjoy uh, Ludovic's other games. A lot of them, actually. And the art, I think, looks really incredible in this game. Those are the things that really just drew me to this game. And so I, I definitely want to want to try it. So it sounds it's, like an interesting thing. It's a lot of like the mechanisms, there's not there wasn't a whole lot of released on this when I saw it. There's not a lot of videos. But it does say it's well go ahead, sorry. So it's betting and bluffing, deck bag and pool building. You love deck building, you love pool building and bag building, right? Yeah, yeah, I like all those things. So I do too. Now betting can be kind of hit or miss for me, so it depends on how that plays out in this game. I but, like betting. Yeah, I just, all those things though, I think this game looks to be cool. I don't know. I didn't know anything about it, but I am interested now that you say all that, because, it could, because of the mechanics, which is that's what gets me excited, or mechanics generally yeah. in games. So, yeah. all right, speaking of 
Actually, this is one. What 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 number was this on your list, Dean? Number nine. Let's just pull that. Was this number nine on your mm -hmm. list? Okay. So my number three is number nine. And I mentioned this on our podcast. Honestly, my top three can be in any order. Like sure. it's they're they're so these three I am so looking forward to incredibly much. I just I don't know. I've I've just threw them into a particular to an order because I had to for this, but I really am excited about all three of these. This is um Alubari, a nice cup of tea. Cup of tea. Your favorite name of a game. Not. It is not my favorite name of a I game. I think it's awesome. Dean. All right, so. Alubari's fine. It's just a, a nice, nice cup, cup of tea. Yes. I mean, it's fine. You're so American. <laughs> I am that. I cannot control that, but you are correct. What are you interested in it for? Uh, Snedonia Fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it looks like Snedonia in some it's, ways. It's so. Tony Bordell, of course. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it has. It very much seems like, uh, and I even saw, saw Tony say something about like um, a little bit more complicated Snedonia, I believe is what yeah. he mentioned. And so, and it's tea, which is really interesting. So those, for those reasons, we love Snedonia. Yes. We both love it. Yeah. And to say, okay, now this is one. And to think about, I think about being a, I'm not a designer, but as a designer, how many times you sit back and go, I wouldn't mind tweaking this. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind tweaking that. Like what I made a good game, but to see that he's been able to now years kind of sit back. He's been able to do tweaks through expansions and stuff with Snedonia. Um, but to think, okay, here's here's a brand new game that he's come out with after sitting back and thinking about that. I am so hype about this game. I can't wait to play it. Yeah, I'm pumped. I, I'm pumped too. Now, you, you know more about it than I do. Um, most of what I've seen is just, I look at the cover. I'm very shallow when it comes to games. Cover and so components. I look at cover and components and I look at the board and I'm like, oh, that looks like Snowdonia. So I want to <laughs> check this out. But no, uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Tony Boydell's uh, uh, game design. And so I, I really want to check this one out as well. I as well. Can't wait to play this game. All right, my number two is another one that I regret not backing on Kickstarter, but you can't back everything. It's you can't. Chocolate Factory. I really like chocolate, and I like board games, and so. Hold up, hold up. Favorite type of chocolate? I, I, I'm just kidding. I, chocolate's okay. Okay, but favorite <laughs> type. But the world must know what's your favorite type of chocolate. Like dark chocolate, white chocolate, milk chocolate. Mm, is there other kinds? Dark and white, probably. I would say. Milk is my least favorite. Me too. I agree with that. In that order, dark, white. Yes. Milk. Do you like a very bitter dark or maybe not super bitter? Um, Depends what I'm in the mood for, I think. Yeah. yeah me too. All right. The same. Chocolate factory. You're not actually eating chocolate. You are making chocolate in your factory. And the... Astute uh, observation. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're changing out like spots on your conveyor belt. So as the chocolate moves forward, you are... Um, changing the you're changing it like you're refining it or you're you're making it into different types of chocolate as you go so that you can fill contracts and that's kind of the gist of it it's it seems to be a not super heavy game but in my sweet spot of like mid-weight euro with a cool theme that's my sweet spot i was gonna say so, whenever you mention this like i almost immediately think this looks like it's so up your alley it is, yeah i'm interested yeah. in this as well i'm super pumped to check this one out yeah chocolate factory excellent well my number two is dean's number one which Spoiler. he's on number one now so we might as well just talk about my number two his number one you know what i'm gonna let you start it because it's your number one. Oh, that's nice of you all right so <laughs> i'm patting myself on the back that is Glenmore 2 yeah! Chronicles. And uh, we actually got to play this on uh, Tabletopia, I mm -hmm. think. And um, we got to play one of the one of the Chronicles. If I remember right, there's eight Chronicles in the game. We did the River Race. Boat yeah, race, the boat that's race. right. So Glenmore is a game, it's a tile lane game that I quite enjoyed the original game. But I feel like this is going to be just so much better when you add in these Chronicles. But it's tile lane. And as you are taking these tiles and putting them onto your board, they're going to trigger, trigger. other tire, like the way it tiles. Triggers. The scoring, the way scoring's done in the new Glenmore 2, I think is way better than the original. And so I'm, I'm, I'm pr not pretty. I'm super pumped about this game. And actually, we both kickstarted this, which we the never first do. First time I think yeah. we've ever both kickstarted a game because we play a lot that. of games together. That's right. And so usually, if he gets it, then I'm fine with that. Or if I get it, he's fine with that. Yeah. But this is one where we were both like, nope. We got to have Let's this. Let's get it. And I think we'll have it here in the next couple weeks. So. As soon as we get this, Meeple Town, we're putting a video up about it. Like and we're that gonna talk day about before we even play it. 
<laughs> no, that'll be jumping to the top of the list to play when we get it for yeah, sure. Cannot so wait fun. for this one, man. Yeah. yeah, I don't really know what else to add besides the playthrough that we did. With the, for, the play that we did was phenomenal. I love... Like what you said, the the, the way that the, the tiles trigger. Like I love simple mechanics that are just brilliant. Yeah, they're smart. You know what I mean? Like, and it, that's what I felt as I played this game. Like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, it comes together in a really wonderful package. Oh, and there's a bunch of chronicles to change the game up. It, add this one. Add that one. It'll tweak it a little bit, and I'm gonna have a million hours of replayability. Yeah, that may be a little bit exaggerated. A million, million hours. <laughs> Plus, we had a great so teacher in Nils from Fun Tales. Uh, we love yes. Nils, which makes this. Even better because of the company. So That's right. For sure. Absolutely. All right. So my number one then is, uh, which again, Glenmore really could have been my number one. Uh, so could Alibari. I love those games. But I went ahead and put uh, Maracaibo Cabo, as my number one, which is your number six. Just outside my top five. So Maracaibo is my number one, his number six. And honestly, it's there's not a lot of, uh, out about this game. Um, I haven't seen much about it. I've even got it here on, um, there's no very... I don't even know if there's. I don't think there's an English video out on that, which I need. I need it to be in English. That's just. That's just who I am. Uh, I wish I knew other languages, but I don't. Yep. <laughs> Is that all you got? That's all I got. No, but I mean, honestly, though, for real, uh, Alexander Fister. Mm, I don't really need to say more. Every time he comes out with a game, I play it and go, "That game is amazing." I would agree. And here's the thing. I've not played Great Western Trail, which is oh, quite the shame. That I is think. the shame, bro. I've seen it played a bunch. And I just still have not found a chance to play it. So I really like that's up at the top of my list to play. And I look at this and I think, yeah. oh, this looks beautiful. The theme really draws me in. You've got hand management. You have a lot of things yeah. from, I believe, like a lot of the mechanics that make Great Western Trail and Black Hat Hong Kong and some of these games so good to me. Boom, thrown in this uh, cool Caribbean boat, like you're out uh, exploring kind of theme. Seems really cool. I can't wait to play this one. Yeah, yeah, me either. I, yep, love all of these games, and that's why my list is There's a is lot the best. of really good list on list. Yeah. A lot of really good games on this list. It's tough. So we're wading through a list of about 1,200 games, roughly, that we found on the, the BGG preview list. And it's Some hard. of them are already out. And that's stuff. right. We, didn't want, we were trying to do ones that ju are at least... Coming out of Essen or right whenever Essen is. Yeah, and there's some like that I cut off my list. Suburbia Collector's Edition, I did back that one. It's not on my list because I've played and loved Suburbia for a long time. It's just a newer edition. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, we could have probably made a top 20. Oh, we could have made a top 50, 50 probably. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. yeah. I agree. So All let's right. Let's do it. But tell people how they can get in touch with us. Let's tell them. All right, so. Um, Thank you for watching this video, and if you're enjoying our videos, we would love for you to subscribe to our channels and hit that notification button. That way you know um, whenever we come out with videos, which we're coming out with videos weekly now. We're on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, all at Meeple Town Games. We're Board Game Geek Guild 3407, and we have a podcast on iTunes and Spotify and Google Play and Stitcher and a bunch of different things like that. That's it. That's it. Thanks for coming, coming down, down to Meeple Town. Let's do it together. <laughs> Thanks. We've heard for Thanks for coming, coming down, down to, to Meeple Town. Town. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meepletown Games and connect with us on the Meepletown Guild, guild number 3407, at boardgamegeek.com. And also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meepletown.